Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm going to be explaining and demonstrating the setup and integration for the core gadget for Nintendo Switch. I'm going to get it matched up with Ableton, and I'm going to be going over a couple of, uh, I guess, tips or um, ways to go about doing things. Because in my day, the very idea of having a something that really passes as a DAW to get ideas down and put in notes, have velocity and have automation. Um, doing that on a computer was very prohibitive and expensive for me. And I had, you know, I, we didn't have a whole lot of money, but, you know, Christmases and birthdays and stuff, I got, you know, video game systems. And, um, you know, I, I asked for a game called uh, Frequency. And what this was, was it's essentially uh, you fly through space and time buttons. It's kind of like, it's kind of like Guitar Hero, but multi-track and with electronic stuff. And it had this really cool um, remix or like freestyle mode. And you could actually, you know, just go through each kind of sound and remix a track. And that was just all I had, essentially. And now we have uh, this, which is orders of magnitude beyond cool for me and if i had this as a as a youngster i would my mind would have exploded i would have never put this down and i yeah i've been using it with uh headphones and you know just really playing around with it and coming up with cool ideas and exploring the uh the gadgets so think of this as you know something with a bunch of hardware built into it that you get for a, a price that's cool and it's you know portable and fun so yeah let's go through uh the initial kind of setup here so uh the overall hookup how i have it hooked up is just the headphone out cable and that is through our typical uh headphone out trs to bring sleeve headphone out and then it's uh goes into the these things which is a tip sleeve so it basically splits it the stereo signal into uh, two mono um, TS uh, jacks and that's going into my sound card and first tip is I noticed that the the switch tends to I guess the headphone ampl amplifier works it works a little hard and it can kind of smudge the audio if you really uh, uh, crank it you get a little bit of a uh, saturation. I'm not sure if it's gadget or if it's um, uh, the program itself. Or, I mean, uh, the switch itself. So yeah, give yourself a little bit of headroom and just do the amplification through your sound card. Um, and I have it set to analog in one and two. And the gain is at uh, you know not even not even that much. And yeah. Just uh, left and right going into analog one and two. Makes sense. Okay, so let's close that. Let's uh, do some, I guess, initial uh, setup here. You just center that kind of. It's hard to record these things. So yeah, let's go uh, create a new song. And let's set the, uh, the tempo to... No, I'm not going to set it to that. Let's go, uh, let's, yeah, let's use uh, London here. So I'm going to hit X and then go to System. And then I'm going to uh, go to the options here. I'm going to make sure the uh, note preview is disabled. Um, I just want to, I always have to make sure that that's occurring. So now let's, uh, let's go over setting up in Ableton. So we have uh, a blank kind of session here. First thing I want to do uh, is insert a new MIDI track. And I'll just move that over there. This is kind of just there for insurance because I want to have the switch set to, uh, let's set it to, yeah. Yeah, we'll go, yeah, 127, right to that. Yeah, 127, and then I'll set Ableton to 127. I'm just going to double click and create a MIDI uh, MIDI track here. Because if I were to get the core gadget synchronized with Ableton, and then I dropped in a loop, which happens, I forget, uh, it will actually take the 
BPM of the loop that you put in there, and it's kind of kind of silly. So that MIDI track is just there for insurance. It doesn't actually do anything except maintain the BPM. Okay, so let me explain how we get this uh, set up here. So we want to have audio from uh, external in, which would be my sound card. I have that configured, and then channel one and two, which is the switch um, headphone out. We're going to go monitor in, and uh, we can kind of see it down there. Yeah, not a big deal. Um, you know, it offers plenty of headroom, and we're not, you know, trying to land a space shuttle or anything. So, yeah, the audio is now coming out of uh, uh, the switch here. I'll just drag in some uh, drums. Right, and uh, the switch is running, and it's... Uh, coming through Ableton, and that's how we are hearing it. So how would you get this synchronized? Well, it's pretty easy. You just have the BPM the same, and you just turn on the metronome, and then hit the Start button, and you uh, use these little nudge tools to uh, match them up. It's uh, pretty simple. I'm going to do that right now. So I'll just turn on the metronome. There we go. All right, so that is synchronized. I'm going to let that play for as long as I want to because uh, I, if I stop the switch or Ableton, they'll uh, they won't they'll go out of sync again. And uh, you know, it's just going to always be in sync. All right. So now let's uh, drag in the hi hat loop, and what that will do is that will drag in some hi hats, and uh, yeah, we can just add things to play in conjunction with what's going on. You get the idea. Oops, I did the thing that I uh, said not to do, but it's easy to, to get it uh, synced back up, which I'm gonna do. All right. Uh, so I'm just going to mute that. I'll just take that hi-hat out. So you have this ability now to have your uh, your switch playing through your Ableton DAW. So let's go into kind of how I would go about, you know, getting something happening. So I'm going to create a, uh, well, insert a new gadget. And let's go, let's go Chicago, just because... All right, and I'm going to hit play. I'm just going to draw something in. All right, so I have that. I have a like a 303 thing going on, and then the kick. Um, let's say if I wanted to have those just as the basis for whatever I'm doing. Well, what I can do is I can actually go into the mixer section. It's hard to see this. I can pan that one left, pan that one right, right? And now they're panned. And what I can do now is I'll just uh, duplicate that, and then have this one set to one, and then this one set to two. So what does that do? Well, it separates it. Mm -hmm. 
So I'll just group those. So that's essentially, yeah, uh, playing them as kind of mono. So what does that do? That, that kind of allows you to have separate effects on each each track. And then you can even sidechain if you're adventurous. This might work. Let's go, uh, yeah, four audio. No, wait, 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 I did that in reverse. Sorry. As an example, and uh, that's you know pretty neat, and it actually works well. And you can just go to town uh, with stuff like this, and uh, it it works out quite well. So yeah, I would separate things. I would have you know think of them as buses. I would have a lead and uh, all that fun stuff on you know uh, one channel, and then the kick and bass, and maybe even the percussion on the other. Gives you like. Uh, flexibility to cut them in and out. All right, so I'm going to stop that and I'm going to move on here because, yeah, let's go. Let's return to title. So just create a new song. I'll just select this one here. So let's uh, let's go over uh, something that I would do in terms of, uh, I guess, a creative workflow. And let's go to Song Settings, and we'll set this to uh, 127. So let's get uh, a super awesome uh, beat in here. Insert audio track, come on. And then, yeah, we'll just go external audio from 1-2 and just monitor that and uh, we don't actually need to uh, synchronize it yet let's just uh, get some stuff going on here so yeah let's go kick 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 and maybe like some sort of percussion-y thing here guys it's kind of hard to see so i'm going to change uh the uh, sound here by tuning it down there we go that's freaking cool all right and let's do the eye effects. Maybe we can give it some uh, low boost here. No. And uh, I'm going to go over to uh, this scene here. And let's, yeah, let's uh, edit the velocity. And yeah, we'll just do that. Right, just editing the velocity. Right, just so I like I like techno if you haven't realized, and this is just so fun for this sort of thing. And I'm just gonna maybe get it to uh, sit well in the mix, take the reverb out. And yeah, maybe the low boost isn't really working. Yeah, 
Yeah, it just had to be gated a tiny bit. And uh, yeah, let's continue. Cool, that's a bit more in context. So, and then the this right here. And you can uh, preview it with the uh, what's that? The ZR button. And I like to tune things. And yeah, we'll just do that. Okay, so we have that. Uh, let's synchronize everything with Ableton. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, essentially solo each one of these channels, and then we'll have it um, within our uh, mixer here, which will be pretty awesome. Uh, and there's a number of ways to do this, but... Uh, and uh, this right here. So yeah, let's uh, let's figure this out. So technically, there's no solo, uh, but that's okay. All right, let's get the kick in there because we need we need to do that anyway. And I'm going to yeah essentially sync this up. Just hit play on the switch. All right, that's pretty much uh, in tune. And what I need to do is I actually need to arm this to record. And what you do is uh, you hit this record button, you say arm it to uh, record, record this channel. And then you essentially go through and kind of print them to a clip. And uh, this is pretty easy to do. You just hit the button and then hit stop on the actual clip here, so it'll stop recording. It'll stop recording after one bar. You can have that set to a number of different things. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna do this, um, I guess, um, right quick. And uh, yeah, you'll see, it's gonna be awesome. You know what, I'll just, I'll just do them in each clip uh, kind of consecutively. Oops. Nope. Nope. There we go. And then these two. All right. So when I did that, what I essentially did was, yeah, each one of these clips, um, you know, you can see them down here. Each one of these clips is that uh, an isolated sound that we had. And that is super 
Well, and you know what? That works. And th the reason um, why I was stopping is because, yeah, Ableton will automatically uh, wait to stop recording after one bar. And this sets the uh, how everything is kind of aligned. And we can take a look. A uh, little bit of lag with the kick, but, you know, not not the end of the world. Like, it's actually pretty good. I'll just do that. Do that. Oh, no. no. That. Let's create a new a bunch of um, audio clips here. Control duplicate, and these will be the uh, drums from that uh, kit there. And it's super awesome. So let's uh, launch that scene. Right, so we can go through uh, one by one and uh, just play around with it if you want. Right, you can. Uh, Drop some EQ in there. And uh yeah, maybe even some VSTs. This is all this is all well and good. Super fun. Right, I'll just go through things uh one by one, just briefly, just so we get the idea. Right. That's pretty uh that's pretty cool. Then this here. I want to pan these. Uh, get some reverb on those. All right, and then uh, these two maybe uh, maybe uh, an echo on one. And uh, yeah, you can do that with that. And then what's this one? Right. I'll get uh, I'll get something a little bit beefy on there. And all that sort of stuff. So check this out. All that, and then you can add uh, filters and stuff on that group. Then you have it kind of forever. All right, so uh, let's move on to a different friend here. All right, um, ba -ba -ba -ba. so that is um, soloing things, and that works uh, quite well. What about like just regular kind of sampling and I'll show you how to do that so some like a really cool uh, instrument here is the uh, the uh, it's called Tokyo right you can get some really cool sounds with that I'm just gonna move that group over here then yeah I'll just scooch that together so yeah there's uh, this right here And uh, yeah, let's edit these a little bit. And let's get an effect on there. Let's get something weird. Ring mod. Okay, so uh, yeah, there's that. Let's play around with this one. Mm. Okay, yeah, we'll just play around with that later. Cool. 
That sounds kind of nice. Okay, so I'm gonna hit um, record, and I'm not gonna, you know, beat match it to anything. I'm just gonna go through these and just press them kind of via the one shot button once. All right. So yeah, there's that. Let's create a new audio track just to drag that in. And we can see the uh, the samples here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, double click at the start of each of those. I'm gonna get this. Hard to have like this guy in the way. Like just, I'm going to like, look at that ring mod. That's cool. And I'm just gonna double click on the start of each of these. And Ableton does a really good job of, you know, detecting those transients there. And I'm going to right click on the clip and then I'm going to do a slice to new MIDI track. And uh, at the warp marker, I'm going to select and then the uh, uh, yeah, I'll just leave it at uh, the built-in preserved warp timing. Uh, sure. So it's going to slice these into a drum rack that looks like so. Not that one. Right. So each of these now is a oops. Each of these now is a sample, and I'll just turn off warp because you know things. So I've effectively yeah, sampled that into the uh, the uh, drum rack here. And uh, here is the drum rack in question. And uh, yeah, this is, this is that. Check this out. Actually, let's make this um, shorter. Right. What happened there? Yeah, for some reason it wants to loop. Um, whatever, dude. Uh, they're not playing long enough to loop anyway, but yeah. There you have that. It's this one. Oops. Right, we are... Needing a bit of volume there. All right, so from here, um, the, the sky's the limit, essentially. You can move that around and then mix that in with your other thing. That makes sense. I hope it does. Anyway, um, on on to the next uh, thing here. Uh, something that you can do also, and this is this is really nice. Uh, let's let's delete that. All right. So we have our our sound here. All right, so we have that. And uh, let's say we, we kind of like that, right? We're going to effectively do something called a, a parallel processing. And this allows us to do some cool stuff. And it's something that I like to do like within the switch because you get some interesting results. So we're going to yeah duplicate this and go into, yeah, just move into this screen here. And uh, we'll set the level to down. Um, and yeah, what we can do is say like a gated reverb, maybe these are the, the effect controls. They're not context sensitive. 
Um, well, they are, but they don't actually give you like a readout of what's happening. You kind of have to guess. And I think I need to yeah set these all to the insert effects. Unless it's soloed. Yeah, short delay maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so we can uh, go into either this or the mixer section, I guess. Right, we can get, yeah, we, we can do some, uh, you know, uh, side chain or, uh, you know, New York compression, parallel compression. As, a, as an example, or give us some uh, distortion. Right, and that's just that's just a little bit, right? As opposed to just to give it a little bit of, I guess, oomph. And uh, there's that, and uh, you can kind of record each of these, solo them within the mixer section. I'm not going to do that, but you know, you get the idea, right? We can actually solo. And then solo. And then process further within Ableton. So the next thing I think is, you know, cool. If we're going to wrap this up with, I guess, uh, sampling is a lot of the sounds from within this. And this is, you know, beyond uh, cool that it's in a you know a nintendo system and kids have access to this it's really exciting for me and uh this uh marb seal uh this is it looks kind of looks like nexus but what it is is it is uh, classic sounds that they pulled from their workstations and a lot of these are very very familiar <laughs> Uh, one that comes to mind, and uh, you know, these these have been sampled and released to death. But uh, there's this one here, which is from Chrono Trigger, and it's something that I really enjoy. And you can take off. Well, it has. Uh, what's really cool about this is that it has um, uh, parallel effects, or they're in sear. No, I think they're parallel, and. Uh, yeah, you can really get some cool effects that way. But you bypass them. And you can just get a note, you know, and record. Right, just to uh, arm that. Let it ring out. I'm actually gonna see if I can yeah, give it uh, some, give it some sustain. All right, let's see what that sounds like there. Oh, that's what it does. Anyway, yeah, let's uh, let's undo that because that was a a good take. Now that I think of it, insert a empty MIDI track and we will add in an instrument we'll add in a, a sampler and I forgot to mention that I was hitting uh, middle C well as close to it as whatever but yeah I'm hitting middle C I'm just gonna drag the sample into there and give it a bit of boost here and then select this one because this one had the whole uh, tail and from here I can actually 
play it. And I might want to want to turn it up. My brain. My brain, please. I'm in the middle of a video here and I don't know what uh You know what you do in this situation? You right click and then you set it to simpler. Give it a bit of a release. And then, uh, yeah, you're making uh, some video gamey stuff. Right, and you know what? I can say with a straight face, you actually can't see it now, but I can say with a straight face that this is very usable, uh, very usable. And the idea that you can have like 50, 50 scenes and 16 tracks and just have ideas, right? Say you like this idea, you made this idea on the bus or the plane or the horse carriage or whatever you're doing, you can actually, uh, duplicate it and then add on and stuff like that and then you know duplicate add on move things around and you can get some really cool ideas down and it's fun um limitations just work within them that's 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 basically everything anyway i hope you guys enjoyed that video a little bit on the long side but it's uh you know worth exploring in my opinion so i hope you enjoyed hope you learned stuff take care and have a good one